Good afternoon and welcome to Exotic PC's video of the brand new Sager NP9170. This is a new model out from Sager that was just recently released here last week. It uh, has some pretty cool upgrades uh, for people who are uh, familiar with the previous models. Uh, you're looking at one right now that I'm sure that any Sager fans are uh, saying yippee to. The backlit keyboard, which we'll, we'll talk about more in depth here. We're just going to kind of give you a look. It, it looks really similar to some of the previous uh, models, really, uh, ever since the you know they changed the the cooling system on. Boy, it's been probably four or five model seasons ago to the double fan, uh, maybe even longer than that. Uh, it, it's it still looks pretty similar to to all those models. Uh, it's been uh, prettied up just a little bit here and there, and it and it certainly has. They've developed their look, and and I think it looks pretty sleek. Uh, especially with the addition of the the aluminum here on the on the hand rest there, I think that looks real nice. And they put some some glossy edges edgings around uh, the back panel and the and the LCD panel, the B section, uh, that that I think aid in in how the you know the computer looks. The model we're reviewing today is is out a little bit earlier than Intel's new third gen processor, which is still on embargo, so we can't talk about it a whole lot yet. Uh, the model, the review model that, that Sager, uh, that we got from here from Sager, it, it has a Sandy Bridge, the 2670 in it for now. Um, of course, once the new Intel 3rd Gen series is out, the machines can either change to that in the future or could be, you know, uh, or will be uh, upgraded with that and, and shipping with that particular processor. Um, as far as other uh, components that we used in the machine, uh, we do have 16 gigs of RAM in here. One of the notable things is the way that we set up the hard drives. This particular series comes with the ability to use the MSATA uh, hard drive. Um, it's more of a chip almost than anything else. It almost looks like a little bit larger than a Wi-Fi card. Um, but it's essentially SSD technology that works in conjunction with another SSD drive. Um, on the previous review that we did, um, it, it wasn't actually set up at the time, so we couldn't see the, the differences in performance. And I can tell you that after, uh, after seeing the difference between the two and setting this one up so that they'll run to essentially in RAID, and then it's, it's kind of like what, what uh, Seagate tried to do with their hybrid drives uh, in a way, but actually using two you know, full SSDs to do it. So you're kind of caching onto the the 80 gig which is the size we chose here they're they're offered in a 40 and an 80 gig size um, and then using the the other which, which of course in this case we chose a SATA 3 uh, Intel 520 series 120 gig drive uh, using those two in conjunction with each other to improve performance and we'll talk about that a little bit more later um, but I will say that uh, the performance boost just over the standard uh, 520 series is is pretty Boy, it's it's pretty sizable. I'll give you the some of the numbers here that that we were able to pull from it after a little bit. Graphically, this computer is is currently uh, for a single card, 17 inch, uh, is 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 top. It's for offering the top notch card. We're we're currently offering in this particular computer the NVIDIA uh, 675, and we'll show you some benchmarks here as we talk about that a little bit in a little bit more depth, but. Uh, that particular video card in of itself is performing quite well for this. The 680s aren't out yet for mobile. We know they are for, for desktops, um, but currently this will be the best card. And from a pricing standpoint, it just $100 more than the 670 is coming in at. I'll tell you the 675 is a nice jump up. If you've been a Sager fan for years like we have, we've worked with them for a very long time, uh, so the new introduction to one of this computer's major features, in my opinion, uh, didn't add to the price any, but it sure added to the value of the computer. As you can see here, I'm trying to show you, we'll, we'll kick the lights off in a second, um, but this computer now has a backlit keyboard. And I'll tell you, the manufacturers of the backlighting are the same ones who do Steel Series backlighting. Uh, it, it's actually a, a fantastic backlit keyboard. The, the keys are, are very evenly lit, unlike some of the other models that have been out there that, um, that we've seen on the market. This particular model, um, the keyboard is, is quite good. Uh, it's very evenly lit. It's not dim in certain sections like some of the others. Its colors are accurate even when uh, split up between the sections. 
Um, and we'll, we'll show you that here in just a moment. Um, but the, the keyboard itself, uh, the tactile response is pretty good. It, it has minimal flex, if actually any at all. Um, it's not the island style. Um, it's maybe kind of a mixture. It's a little bit wider, uh, I think, than um, some of the normal keyboards that you see. Uh, as even someone who has a large hands, large fingers. Uh, it's still very comfortable to type on, comfortable to use, and it's easy to type quickly, which I know is important. Um, and just overall, from a, a laptop keyboard, performance-wise, is, is quite good. All right, we've kicked the lights off here, and I'm just going to show you some of the features of the keyboard itself. Um, to bring up this particular screen, which is uh, essentially your keyboard color control panel, if you will, um, it's, it's essentially this, the function button, and then it's this button right up here above the 8. Uh, then that'll get us to the screen here. And on the screen, we can choose colors, we can choose uh, random little things that it does here and there uh, for us. And like if you choose this little guy right here, now you can go down because um, it is sectioned off and I can just choose red. And of course, we'll swing over here to red. Same thing for any of the others. Um, it doesn't give you quite as many options for colors as the MSI uh, does. And I know that's quite popular. The keyboard itself is better lit, more evenly lit. And the colors are, are just as good and they're easy to see. Um, but it isn't as flashy of a keyboard or it has as many features as the other one uh, that MSI has been using. But I think overall people will be happier with it because it will work and they won't have to um, mess with it to get it to, to function properly or maybe even RMA it. Um, but the, the controls are easy to use, uh, which is another benefit for sure, um, where some of the other keyboards that I've used, maybe like Alienware's, their control center's clunky, it's, it's buggy, uh, at least on the ones, the couple, three machines that I've tried, um, you know, between the failing and having to reload it and, and just how it functions, uh, this is more streamlined, granted it is easier, uh, more simple. Uh, the other options here, it'll, it'll give you some more, just the more of the flashy stuff to where you can make your keyboard dance around and its lights and they just call different things like flash and so flashing on and off wave I won't show you them all but there's um, some of them are pretty cool uh, but for functional use I, I wouldn't say that um, many are going to be using the wave here uh, while they're trying to use their keyboard in, in the dark as you can see some sections uh, aren't lit while it tries to wave past um, but the, the base you know, color and and brightness here of just even the white. And I'm going to get up and just, I'm going to change them all to white here. Get up so you can see how the backlighting is. Um, and one of the things that I like about this in comparison to even some of, of Asus's recent models is that the keys are very translucent at the top where the, where you, so you can easily tell what key it is. It's very well lit. You know, and as you can see here, it's just um, something in the dark is quite easy to you know quite easy to tell the difference between the keys. The stock clocks we we've taken 3D Mark Vantage runs of uh, of the unit itself with stock clocks, and then a, a standard overclock score, and then a max overclock. Even stock with uh, the Sandy Bridge chip, we're we're seeing. Um, you know, P16763, which for a single card is pretty pretty darn good. Um, going back to some of the, the base cards, like the, you know, 560, 460, some of those, um, where these laptops really started to get into pretty outstanding performance, you know, we were only seeing, you know, 7,500, 8,000, you know, maybe with the 560, we would overclock, you're hitting 10,000, but, but even even so, a big boost here on this particular one. Um, something that um, some people may not know about exotic PCs, we do offer uh, an overclock feature, which the benefit wise to you, that's essentially going to allow us to do the, all the overclocking for you. Um, we're going to set it up for you. It's done here. Uh, granted, it might be somewhat easy to do, but it gives us the responsibility of ensuring that not only is it overclocked at the best level that it can be for, not for thermals as well as um, just overall stability, but also that if something were to go wrong with the computer because of the overclock, 
you know, you've got no liability. That's all on us. So it's a feature that's become extremely popular because of that. Um, as you can see here, uh, we're just with our standard overclock, we're going up to 18.605. So that's a, that's a pretty nice boost over the 1600 score that we were just looking at. You know, 2,000 points of, of uh, increase is <laughs> certainly not, uh, not minor in this case. So overclocking uh, does have a nice headroom. Uh, max overclock on this particular unit, we'll bring it up here. This is not keeping temperatures or anything else in, in mind, something that we may not run uh, constantly. But if you're looking at 1909, so about a 400, uh, yeah, 400 point boost. Not massive, but there's a little bit there if someone wanted to be adventurous. Um, but I would take uh, the boost of, of the standard overclock any day, uh, knowing that we test for all temperatures uh, and overall gaming stability on that. Um, <clears throat> one of the other things that I would say that's unique to this model now is that um, it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. And I will say, uh, as I was looking through, I didn't expect it, but um, when you take a look at the uh, video card that's used in here, obviously the 675 in battery life, you think. Okay, well, if I'm running, you know, anything graphically, movies, whatever, um, we're not expecting much life at all. Now, this is going to be the first unit that is also using or capable of using the Intel 3000 series chipset. So we've got Optimus on this machine, which is a first. So you have Optimus on something that's better than a, uh, you know, a 555 NVIDIA you know, huge performance difference between that and this, and now we can gain the battery life benefits of uh, of the the Intel. Now, granted, this is a 17 inch machine. We're not expecting a ton of battery life, or one wouldn't on it anyway. I don't think. But um, <clears throat> one thing that I that I will say is that you know the 15 inch version of this that we were just reviewed, um, you know, you can expect considerably better battery performance on that, and it has the same feature. Um, but you know, if you want the bigger screen. Here it is, and you also get Optimus uh, to boot with a with a GTX 675. One of the cool features that I was telling you about in the introductory is that um, the hard drive on this particular unit is pretty cool because uh, they have introduced that MSATA to it. Now, just running, uh, this is HD Tune, that's their Pro Benchmark. Um, just running this on the standard drive by itself. Um, you're getting what you would expect, you know, a maximum of somewhere around 330 and average, I believe, somewhere just uh, like 298. Um, this is with that uh, smart response technology from um, from Intel running with the MSATA and then the SATA 3 520 series Intel. So you can see burst speeds of 903 megabytes per second and an average of 446. Now that's That's pretty outstanding, I would say. Um, you know, for for a machine that typically, um, like the 15 inch, only uses one x one hard drive bay. Um, and in this case, you've got uh, the ability to you could split them off, I suppose, if you wanted to. But the performance boost is pretty huge, so it combines them together in a RAID format. Um, this particular unit it does have the the opportunity to uh, have three hard or two extra hard drives plus an extra one installed in the optical bay. Um, as well, just as any of our machines do, we, we can install a hard drive in the optical bay. So you could essentially have, you know, um, two extra hard drives plus this uh, smart response technology set up with the MSATA and a regular SATA, Intel SATA drive, um, get some great storage space as well as uh, just incredible uh, OS and, you know, other gaming or otherwise performance, whatever you put on your, your uh SATA drive. So it's a, a huge boost, which uh, is really nice. This is the first uh, series that they've been offering that, uh, and we're pretty impressed. All right, next thing I'm going to go over, I'm going to swing around here to the back of, of the machine, and uh, we'll talk about the input-output ports here. As you can see, the back is where the venting is. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about thermals um, in a, just a little bit, but um, dual vents and dual fans and, and heat sinks are pretty awesome so we'll talk about that but you can see this is where it's vented our video outputs are here uh, the display port is something new that um, Sega has included on this series uh, kind of cool it never had it before but it just gives that extra um, 
you know, output option uh, for someone who, who wants to be able to use a DisplayPort adapter. Uh, we do have the HDMI output, and uh, it's nice. They also included, for those who don't have HDMI on their monitors, um, a DVI output for you as well. That's, that's not very typical in, in uh, today's high-performance PC to see that. Um, we'll swing around over here to the right, and we have a little bit of legacy uh, ports as well as uh, some new technology here. Uh, you can see that the IEEE uh, 1394, the FireWire port, uh, that's unique to, to now that, that that didn't exist on the last series. It's nice they've added it because there has been um, people asking for it, you know, video and audio recorders or people who do, um, you know, audio recording for, for professionally. A lot of their equipment does connect via that way, so this is something that Sager has added. Um, and we're pretty happy about that. As you keep going to the right here, your Ethernet standard, um, this does, this is kind of nice, this does have some new features to it from the USB standpoint. USB 3 has become, you know, a standard on all laptops pretty much that we sell. Um, this has a couple of different variances. As you can see, um, this one here, of course, is an eSATA USB 3 combo port. So they give us a little bit of legacy uh, option there with the eSATA. Uh, and also give us a, a powered USB port here, which um, they hadn't previously. So this will power your devices, uh, you know, USB devices without uh, the machine being on. Uh, so that's, it. of course, it has to have battery life or be plugged in while it's doing that. Um, but that does give you the option to plug an I, you know, iPod or something in there and, and charge it while the machine is turned off. Um, as we keep making our way over here to the right, the last uh, port that we'll have here is just our 3-in-1 card reader port. It just uses the standard features. As we make our way to the front of it here, you'll you'll see it's it's very clean, sleek. It doesn't uh, it doesn't have any ports or anything really, so to speak, on the front. Um, as you can see here, it's just a couple of LED uh, lights, just telling us that you know we've got a battery in here and that we're powered. Uh, that's, that's all that it's telling you there. Uh, swinging over to the right, uh, this is where you're going to find your optical drive. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got the option of being able to install hard drive in there. So you could install um, a variety of anything from SSDs to, you know, one gig drives to, you know, pretty much any drive that we carry, we can install in there. Um, of course, that leaves you without an optical drive, but we do sell externals very inexpensively. So if you just wanted the extra storage space, or even the option to install a drive you already have, that can be done in here. We do offer both Blu-ray, read, and, and, and writers as, as another option here, or just a standard DVD drive if you just want that. Um, as we make our way to the right a little bit more, you're going to see a little bit better jack pack from an audio standpoint than you do on, on quite a number of laptops, even in the performance series. Uh, Sager has given the option here to be able to um, go all the way up to a 7.1, uh, decoded signal to send it out to a speaker system that's capable of or that needs something to decode it first and then uh, send it out. A lot of uh, your typical um, speaker systems made for computers, uh, some, a lot of them are set up this way. Uh, of course you've got your just your standard SPDIF output um, in case they just you know they do the decoding themselves but in the event that you know your game or something uh, wants to utilize 7.1 and you have a speaker system that can take advantage of this. You can change within the audio driver each of these inputs and outputs to actually output the variety of signals that you need for that 7.1 system. Um, without setting it up that way, you have your standard headphone jack, a microphone, an SPDIF digital, and then an audio output. Uh, the, the final one, of course, is just a legacy USB 2.0. I just got a little peek here. I wanted to just talk to you about um, speaker system real quick and some of the other things that you know you'll kind of see as far as the look is concerned here um, this all this here is this is brushed aluminum looks really nice it stays very cool to the touch we'll talk about here in a second um, they did make this the edge here all the way around a, a glossy black um, you know of course it's the fingerprint magnet but it it looks real sharp um, and of course our touchpad here uh, it is a nice touchpad. They continue the brushed aluminum in the touchpad, so it has a nice feel. It also is responsive, um, quite responsive. I actually like the way that this touchpad feels um, and you, in, in use in comparison to quite a number of the other touchpads out there. Um, these here are just a little bit um, 
perforated, if you will, almost to, to give it a texture um, so you can tell the difference. Um, but it's just your basic uh, left to right with a, a fingerprint reader, biometrics there, right in the middle. Um, so another, just another little value add feature that um, adds some nice touch to uh, this computer. Uh, you'll make your way around here. Um, oh, this is uh, probably some sort of carbon fiber. It could be, could be plastic. It's, it, it's nice enough that I can't tell really. Um, the speakers are hidden uh, up along this bar here. They did uh, use Ankyo, which is an audio company that, and it's kind of a trend that we've kind of seen here in laptops lately, is that they're using audio companies to manufacture the audio card or speaker system or some portion of the computer. Uh, MSI is doing it with the Dyn Audio. Ankyo here apparently is doing that now with Sager, with Clevo. Um, the sound is improved over the previous model season. Um, the one downside, if there were to this computer or to the previous Sager that we um, reviewed just a few days ago uh, is that uh, the audio system isn't uh, as fantastical as say the MSI would be. It's still adequate um, but a gamer who really cares about sound probably is using headphones and unfortunately I think that's maybe kind of what Sega or Clevo's uh, frame of mind is when um, building a speaker system on these. They put a lot of uh, uh, ideas and research and development and performance into the other aspects of the computer <clears throat> whereas maybe they, they could give a little bit more of that to the speaker system um, but that's just my one li little uh, quip if you will on on the performance of this computer uh, I wasn't turned off by it it, it wasn't as um, abysmal as some, maybe some of the previous seasons have been um, but it, it wasn't up to being as good as as the the MSI or maybe some of the others that that really tout their speaker system as being um, just fantastic, which, which they are. Next thing I want to talk to you about here is the screen on this, at least the stock screen, which is what we're looking at now. Uh, it is a 1920 by 1080 glossy panel for stock. Um, that's kind of come back now that, um, I don't know, the last model season tend to focus on matte finishes. Still do offer a matte finish panel on here. It is an upgraded uh, color performance to 72 percent and TSC uh, color gamut matte finish screen and there is the um, the beautiful 90 percent uh, glossy that's offered for this which is just a, a beautiful screen um, especially combine that with uh, with our professional calibration and and you've got a one screen that'll just blow you away whether that's you need it for photography or you know video videography or if you're just gaming and you want your your games to just look awesome um, that is one up, upgrade that has become extremely popular and a focus of many many people plus you gain the benefit of, of the best viewing angles um, that are offered right now within within uh, the computer world the laptop world. Um, as far as viewing angles on the standard panel which is offered with the machine um, they're above average for sure um, it does decrease in brightness I would say uh, minimally at probably about 50% and then it, it takes a while to get further than that. So you get a small decrease in brightness at probably about the 50, the 50 degree, excuse me, the 50 degree mark um, and then it stays pretty even throughout there on our, uh, on our horizontal viewing angle. Vertically that's, that's always going to be the, the the catch, if you will. Not that many people look at their computer from from the top down, uh, but it is it is where screens do not perform as well as they do um, horizontally. Um, of course, as you um, just like most screens, um, as you bend it back, you you can you can still see a pretty good brightness level even with an angle, and that's that's the furthest angle that the screen will bend back. Um, once again, it, it's probably not how many people are going to use their laptop, but in case you do, um, the viewing angle isn't terrible that way. It's not as bright. Um, the sweet spot on the laptop is obviously going to be the center, but if you're sharing it, watching a movie or something uh, with a spouse or friend or someone, um, it, it's not going to be um, something that, that you dislike uh, having to share or even sitting at an angle. It's still pretty good. Um, of course, if you really, really care about that, the the uh, 
90% gamut glossy screen, so the best viewing angles that we've seen, and, and not only that, but just the, be the best image combined with, with the professional calibration. It's just fantastic. All right, the next thing that uh, I wanted to show you, a lot of folks have been asking to see the BIOS on other review machines that we've been doing. Uh, so I did want to just kind of give you an idea of um, what the BIOS looked like, what some of the options were. If you're really familiar with desktops, you can't go into a, a performance laptop uh, by any manufacturer and expect to get much in the way of options within the BIOS that are non-standard. Um, they, they're going to lock down pretty much everything. You know, there's no voltages and, and no uh, overclocking options that are offered within the BIOS. Um, but, but that's pretty normal. They, they just don't want people to be uh, digging around in there making mistakes. Um, plus, you've got your power supply that, that when you start really changing voltages, things like that, they just aren't, aren't built like a power supply in a desktop. So um, it is going to be locked down, but I wanted to give you an idea just to show you here a little bit about um, the offerings that, that are there. You know, you're going to see your different SATA port options are here, so you can see once you've installed something, whether or not it's present. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, this does have the opportunity to have two hard drives just regularly um, and then you can also add that M SATA plus one in the optical bay um, and then the standard so you could essentially have four drives in here uh, or three if you want to look at it uh, in, the, in the way of combining those two uh, drives for that performance that we talked about earlier. Speaking over to uh, advanced you, you just have the Bluetooth power setting within the chipset control. Um, this rapid start technology that's that's what um, I was talking about earlier. Um, smart response, rapid start, um, I get they're, they're kind of calling it a couple different things. Um, but as you, uh, as you see here, we've got an enabled. Uh, and then when you swing down into the SATA mode, you have to have it set to RAID mode uh, to combine the two. And I know most people don't usually combine uh, hard drives that are different sizes, let alone SSDs on, on a laptop, uh, but in this case that's what's expected and then you're going to load their driver and that's what gives you the performance and, and in, improves, um, improves that performance and allows them to work in conjunction with each other. Um, you, have, you can turn on, you can enable or disable the Intel anti-theft technology um, and then it's just talking about whether or not you want the USBs to have legacy support or not and work with uh, the 1.0, 2.0s, and the 3.0s. Uh, you can turn off the boot logo if you don't like the Sager. Um, you can make it beep when it powers on and give you an alarm when the battery powers low. You can set a BIOS password um, to change your boot options here. Um, and then, you know, just top in here and see what options are installed if maybe you're getting your optical drive isn't working or something you come in here and see whether or not your uh, motherboard is reading the optical drive or things like that net net devices if you want to boot to a net device um, and then it, you can pop in the hard drive priorities and and you can see here that we've created the Intel volume zero which is what that uh, that rapid response smart response technology is doing Next thing we want to talk about is the thermals on this. Um, Exotic PC has invested in a, in a really cool uh, technology here that's capable of reading uh, the, the thermal, I guess it, you, as you can see here on the screen, it's a kind of a thermal picture of everywhere that's hot on the screen or you know just the, the true temperature on all aspects of, of uh, anything that we point this at. Uh, and the little center uh, light there is there is a little center uh, hair crosshairs are telling you that's the the point at which we're measuring. So where you see that pointing to, that's that's the point what it's just saying as you see on the screen there with the with the temperature that it's reading. Um, but this is going to give you an idea of all the places on the laptop that are warmer than others. Something that you can expect. So you can see, you know, in many cases, this where that aluminum is, um, it's it's much lower than even uh, even running. A, uh, we're running Vantage on this right now just to give you simulation of a game. Um, we've been doing that for, you know, 10 minutes or so just to kind of give you an idea of once it's been ramped up and it's the fans are kicked on and, and everything's going like it should. An idea of the temperatures, and we're going to show you just different um, aspects of the computer locations so that you can get an idea of, of how hot it's getting. Um, and, and it's just a neat tool to show us and to show you what you can expect from, you know, palm heat and wrist heat and things like that. 
um, to where this one you can see how good it is in in, in its performance and thermals. Um, so you'll you'll see here with these uh, images that we're taking just a little better idea of um, of the thermals of this computer, um, and it's much uh, much cooler I'd say than uh, when we used to just use a regular heat gun or even the laser heat gun to show you different aspects of the temperatures. This you're really seeing um, the differences there. All right, next thing we're going to go over, we're going to take a look here at the inside of this uh, Sager NP 9170. Um, we'll kind of have a peek at uh, just the different bays here so you can get an idea of where stuff is and, and kind of what they are. Um, the first thing that's over here, that's the new, new thing that's notable. This is that MSATA um, hard drive. So this is an 80 gig Intel MSATA drive. It's one that is used in conjunction with the other Intel drive uh, to produce that, those awesome uh, hard drive uh, specs and, and benchmarks we were seeing earlier. Um, so that's where it goes. Like I said, it, it sits on a PCI bus, so it kind of looks like a, a Wi-Fi card, uh, just a little bit bigger. Uh, but that's that. Uh, that's that spot. That's don't install your Wi-Fi card there. You don't want to do that. Um, as you can see here, the two different sides. One of the nice things they did do, and I'm not sure how if this video can can show it very well here and see the difference between the fan sizes. Uh, the CPU is on this side, GPU is on that side. Um, the CPU is easily accessible with just the four screws there. Um, as you can see, it does not have a you break it, you bought it sticker anywhere on it or void warranty sticker like uh, pretty much all the other manufacturers do. So this is one of the places where Sager uh, allows you some freedom to be able to change the processor. They won't, of course, warrant your new processor, but it won't also it won't void the computer's warranty uh, as Pretty much all the other manufacturers on on the market uh, claim that that cracking that open will do. Um, same thing with the with the GPU. Uh, it's user upgradable. So should another uh, card come out with the same MXM card slot that works with this board, uh, an upgrade, say the 680 or something comes out, and uh, you can buy that separately later on down the road and do an upgrade on it. Um, it's once again very easily accessible. Nice thing that, that I'm noting is that they do um, they have pretty short um, thermal pipes, so it gets to the, the heat sink and into the to the vent and fan very quickly. Um, of course, you're going to want to do periodic cleanings of, of both your fan and your heat sink. So we take your fan off, blow out the heat sink real good. It's one of the things that people just forget about their laptops, and since Sager has made it so easy to clean, uh, it just makes sense to do that. Uh, I would say every you know couple months, maybe even uh, sooner if you if you have uh, pets with you know lots of shedding hair. Uh, but that's one way just to keep your computer in tip-top shape and, and not have to do RMAs because you you know burned out a video card or something. Um, but they they've got good cooling. Um, you know it's it's it produces and performs you know spectacularly in that particular uh, arena. So they've done it very smart here. Uh, this does have four bays for RAM. Uh, right now we've got four gig sticks in these. Uh, the other two bays are underneath the keyboard. Uh, we can provide a, a removal, a keyboard removal guide if, or for someone if they want um, to be able to access those themselves. It, it's not going to be super difficult to access, uh, but might be a little intimidating just looking at it, trying to figure it out. So definitely, you know, give us an email or something if if uh, you want to do that yourself. Um, but they give us the two on the inside here and then two on the opposite. And as we go up here, we do have the two places for hard drive. Um, this particular drive here, which is our, this is going to be our secondary bay actually, but we're using it for, uh, this is, this is port, port one and this is port zero. Uh, we're using this for our SSD in, uh, in conjunction with, with that MSATA over there. Um, but you've got the bay here and the bay here. It will come with the, uh, the, the case to, uh, you know, install your bracket. Uh, this particular one, I don't believe uses, it doesn't, it doesn't use a, a bracket at all. So don't be surprised, it's designed that way, um, you know, when you actually put the cover on here, it holds the drive in place, and we've never had complaints of, and this is the way they did it last time too, never had complaints of, of Sager's sliding or anything out of there. Um, they did put this little piece on here, so if you do replace the hard drive, you're going to want to put this little guy here, on another one of your machines and it actually looks like it does connect there I didn't see that before so it does connect just unscrew the sides and then this plastic piece fits on there but the beyond that there's not not, not a bracket like you would you would see here so if you order it hard drive less which is an option that we can give you we'll give you a small reduction in price um, then that's the case with this you're not going to find 
um, you know, bracket or anything for this bay. You're just going to put on this little plastic sleeve with the two little rubber pieces that fits it nice, nice and snugly in there. Um, other than that, battery uh, bay is here. The battery itself is pretty small. Looks like this. Um, it's a 52 milliamp uh, and 76.96 watt per hour. So it's a little bit bigger than the battery, a little more powerful than the battery previously used. Um, the AC adapter here is is a is a good size one. It's a 220 watt. Um, so they did give us a, a larger um, AC adapter than the previous model. The last model used a 180. They've stepped it up both in the 15 inch and the 17 inch to provide more power, which is nice. It gives us more play on um, on our GPU. So you know, if a 680 ever did come out, the chance of this supporting it would be better because of of the bigger uh, AC adapter. Uh, so that's 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 the uh, inside of this guy here. It's um, very well designed, very easy to access. It was four screws to take off this plate, two to take off this, and two to take off that. So you've got eight screws, and and you're completely in your machine uh, doing whatever upgrades or, or cleanings or whatever else that it is that you want to do. Hey, thank you for watching Exotic PC's review video of Sager's NP9170. We've seen a lot of great features on this today, and we reviewed a really awesome machine. We're very pleased with it. We know it's going to be a, a killer uh, seller here, and it's it's got just a bunch of features that that uh, we know you're going to love. Uh, feel free to hop on to our website, exoticpc.com. That's xoticpc.com, where you can find our forums as well as our live chat channel to hop in there and ask our tech guys or sales guys any questions that you have. Feel free to call uh, as well. A number is on the website. Uh, if you have any other questions or any comments, please feel free to leave them in the YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.